Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I will be talking about how Medicare final rule impacts the physician fee schedule for the calendar year 2022. On November 2nd of 2021, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services or CMS issued a final rule that includes updates on policy changes for Medicare payments under the Physician Fee Schedule or PFS and other Medicare Part B issues on or after January 1st, 2022. The calendar year 2022 Physician Fee Schedule or PFS final rule is one of several rules that reflect a broader administration-wide strategy to create a healthcare system that results in better accessibility, quality, affordability, empowerment, and innovation. Some of the takeaways from this final rule are as follows. Calendar year 2022 Physician Fee Schedule Rate Setting and Conversion Factor CMS finalized a series of standard technical proposals involving practice expense, including standard rate setting refinements, the implementation of the fourth year of the market-based supply and equipment pricing update, and changes to the practice expense for many services associated with the update to clinical labor pricing. CMS is finalizing its proposal to update the clinical labor rates for calendar year 2022 through the addition of a four-year transition period as requested by public commenters. CMS has used a four-year transition to incorporate new pricing data in the past, such as for the previous supply and equipment pricing update, and CMS believes that it will help provide payment stability and maintain beneficiary access to care. With the budget neutrality adjustment to account for changes in RVUs required by law and expiration of 3.75% temporary calendar year 2021 payment increase provided by the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2021 or CAA, the calendar year 2022 PFS conversion factor is $33.59, which is a decrease of a dollar and thirty cents from the calendar year 2021 PFS conversion factor of thirty-four dollars and eighty-nine cents. The PFS conversion factor reflects a statutory update of zero percent and the adjustment necessary to account for changes in relative value units and expenditures that would result from its finalized policies. Evaluation and Management Visits CMS is engaged in an ongoing review of payment for evaluation and management visit code sets. For calendar year 2022, CMS finalized several policies that take into account the recent changes to evaluation and management visits codes as explained in the AMA CPT code book, which took effect January 1, 2021. CMS is also clarifying and refining policies that were reflected in certain manual provisions that were recently withdrawn. Specifically, CMS is making a number of refinements to its current policies for split or shared evaluation and management visits, critical care services, and services furnished by teaching physicians involving residents. Split or shared evaluation and management visits. CMS is defining its long-standing policies for split or shared evaluation and management visits to better reflect the current practice of medicine, the evolving role of non-physician practitioners or NPPS as members of the medical team, and to clarify conditions of payment that must be met to bill Medicare for these services. In the calendar year 2022 Physician Fee Schedule Final Rule, CMS is establishing the following. Definition of split or shared evaluation and management visits as evaluation and management visits provided in the facility setting by a physician and an NPP or non-physician practitioner in the same group. The visit is billed by the physician or practitioner who provides the substantive portion of the visit. By 2023, the substantive portion of the visit will be defined as more than half of the total time spent. For 2022, the substantive portion can be history, physical exam, medical decision making or more than half of the total time except for critical care which can only be more than half of the total time.
split or shared visits can be reported for new as well as established patients and initial and subsequent visits as well as prolonged services. A modifier is required on the claim to identify these services to inform policy and help ensure program integrity. Documentation in the medical record must identify the two individuals who performed the visit. The individual providing the substantive portion must sign and date the medical record. Codifying these devised policies in a new regulation at Title 42, Code of Federal Regulation 415.140. For critical care services, CMS is refining its long-standing policies establishing that critical care services are defined in the CPT codebook prefatory language for the code set. The CPT codebook listing of bundled services are not separately payable. When medically necessary, critical care services can be furnished concurrently to the same patient on the same day by more than one practitioner representing more than one specialty and critical care services can be furnished as split or shared visits. Critical care services may be paid on the same day as other evaluation and management visits by the same practitioner or another practitioner in the same group of the same specialty if the practitioner documents that the evaluation and management visit was provided prior to the critical care service at a time when the patient did not require critical care, the visit was medically necessary and the services are separate and distinct with no duplicative elements from the critical care service provided later in the day. Practitioners must report modifier 25 on the claim when reporting these critical care services. Critical care services may be paid separately in addition to a procedure with a global surgical period if the critical care is unrelated to the surgical procedure. Pre-operative and or post-operative critical care may be paid in addition to the procedure if the patient is critically ill, meets the definition of critical care and requires the full attention of the physician and the critical care is above and beyond and unrelated to the specific anatomic injury or general surgical procedure performed, example trauma burn cases. CMS is creating a new modifier for use on such claims to identify that the critical care is unrelated to the procedure. If care is fully transferred from the surgeon to an intensivist and the critical care is unrelated, the appropriate modifiers must also be reported to indicate the transfer of care. Medical record documentation must support the claims. Teaching Physician Services The AMA CPT Office slash Outpatient Evaluation and Management Visit Coding Framework that CMS finalized for calendar year 2021 provides that practitioners can select the office slash outpatient evaluation and management visit level to bill based either on either the total time personally spent by the reporting practitioner or medical decision making or MDM. Under existing regulations, if a resident participates in a service furnished in a teaching setting, a teaching physician can bill for the service only if they are present for the key or critical portion of the service. Under the so-called primary care exception in certain teaching hospital primary care centers, the teaching physician can bill for certain services furnished independently by a resident without the physical presence of a teaching physician but with a teaching physician's review. CMS finalized and clarified that when time is used to select the office slash outpatient evaluation and management visit level, only the time spent by the teaching physician in qualifying activities, including time that the teaching physician was present with the resident performing those activities, can be included for purposes of visit level selection. Under the primary care exception, time cannot be used to select visit level. Only MDM or medical decision making may be used to select the evaluation and management visit level to guard against the possibility of inappropriate coding that reflects residents inefficiencies rather than a measure of the to total medically necessary time required to furnish the evaluation and management services. Billing for physician assistant or PA services. CMS is implementing Section 403 of the Consolidated Appropriations Act, which authorizes Medicare to make direct payment to physician assistants for professional services that they furnish under Part B beginning January 1, 2022. 
Medicare currently can only make payment to the employer or independent contractor of a PA. Beginning January 1, 2022, PAs may bill Medicare directly for their professional services, reassign payment for their professional services, and incorporate with other PAs and bill Medicare for PA services. Telehealth services under the physician fee schedule. CMS finalized that it will extend through the end of calendar year 2023 the inclusion on the Medicare telehealth services list of certain services added temporarily to the telehealth services list that would otherwise have been removed from the list as of the later of the end of the COVID-19 public health emergency or December 31st, 2021. CMS has also extended inclusion of certain cardiac and intensive cardiac rehabilitation codes through the end of calendar year 2023. This will allow for more time for CMS and stakeholders to gather data, for stakeholders to submit support for requesting that services be permanently added to the Medicare telehealth services list and to reduce uncertainty regarding the timing of its processes with regard to the end of the public health emergency. Additionally, CMS is adopting coding and payment for a longer virtual check-in service on a permanent basis. Section 123 of the Consolidated Appropriations Act removed the geographic restrictions and added the home of the beneficiary as a permissible originating site for telehealth services furnished for the purposes of diagnosis, evaluation, or treatment of a mental health disorder. Section 123 requires for these services that there must be an in-person, non-telehealth service with the physician or practitioner within six months prior to the initial telehealth service and requires a secretary to establish a frequency for subsequent in-person visits. CMS is implementing these statutory amendments and finalizing that an in-person non-telehealth visit must be furnished at least every 12 months for these services that exceptions to the in-person visit requirement may be made based on beneficiary circumstances with a reason documented in the patient's medical record and that more frequent visits are also allowed under, our poli under its policy as driven by clinical needs on a case-by-case -case basis. CMS is amending the current definition of interactive telecommunication system for telehealth services which is defined as multimedia communications equipment that includes at a minimum audio and video equipment permitting two-way real-time interactive communication between the patient and distant site physician or practitioner to include audio-only communications technology when used for telehealth services for the diagnosis, evaluation or treatment of mental health disorders furnished to established patients in their homes under certain circumstances. CMS is limiting the use of an audio-only interactive telecommunication system to mental health services furnished by practitioners who have the capability to furnish two-way audio-slash-video communications but where the beneficiary is not capable of or does not consent to the use of two-way audio-slash-video technology. CMS also finalized the requirement for the use of a new modifier for services furnished using audio-only communications which would serve to verify that the practitioner has the capability to provide two-way audio and video technology but instead used audio-only technology due to beneficiary choice or limitations. CMS is also clarifying that mental health services can include services for treatment of substance use disorders. Pulmonary Rehabilitation CMS proposed to expand coverage of outpatient pulmonary rehabilitation services paid under Medicare Part B to beneficiaries who were hospitalized with COVID-19 and experienced persistent symptoms including respiratory dysfunction for at least four weeks after hospitalization. CMS finalized coverage for outpatient pulmonary rehabilitation services paid under Medicare Part B to beneficiaries who have had confirmed or suspected COVID-19 and experienced persistent symptoms that include respiratory dysfunction for at least four weeks. All right, that's all I had today. Thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and leave me a few comments. Hope to see you soon. Bye now.